Hello Shiva. Uh, are you able to hear me? Hello. Yes, yes. Yep, I Is it clear or is it not I clear? Am... How is it? Yeah. Are you clear? You are clear. You are clear. And I might get it. I I might be clear. You are clear too. No problem. Okay, okay. So in between I might get a call. So Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, let let me let okay. us know as you get some as you get the call. Okay. Right now I'm free, but within ten fifteen minutes I might get a call. Then. And uh, you will be on call for how much time? Might be two minutes, two three minutes. Okay, fine, no problem. All right. <clears throat> so Shiva, all that I'm trying to understand is, um, you know, concept of guru according to you, because it's uh, I haven't seen you for a while. You are not online. I know you've been busy in uh, seeking uh, both of uh, your uh, psychology psychology degree as well as uh, you know your spiritual uh, enhancement stuff which you're going through. So I don't want to, so on, I don't want to reveal to everyone what what exactly you're doing, but rather I would want you to let us know because uh, uh, you've been through uh, various uh, spiritual experiences in your absence on clubhouse and uh, in the real life out there. So what have you? Just let us know um, how, like, what what made you, uh, you know, go towards this path of seeking, like what exactly is seeking and then we'll go to the idea of guru after your call so um, probably like first first 10 minutes or 15 uh, let's take us to your uh, inquiry process why you went into the course of inquiry what is when does that even happen and then uh, the way you looked uh, for someone who can take you through this journey that's all shiva so mike is yours thank you yeah, thank you, Mindset. So the thing is, uh, you, are, you asked about seeking. I, I think every person in the world has some or the other seeking. And everybody wants to know about uh, what they, they are seeking and how to achieve it and how to experience uh, whatever the desire that they are seeking. So seeking is the most, uh, it's most uh, natural phenomenon because desire, there is a desire, there is a, a seeking for the fulfillment of desire and there is a fulfillment of desire and you, you feel satisfied for a moment and you uh, again start the cycle, the cycle of seeking in the world. But there comes the times uh, where uh, you seek, you, you, these things does not give you to satisfaction. You start, when you sit down alone with yourself, when you are in beside a river, when you are beside nature, uh, or a place of greenery in the nature, what happens is you there. The questions comes in your mind, what I am actually, what I am, from where I came from, where I am going, how how does I came into this existence. And you, there might be many answers that appear uh, uh, for you, according to your own conditioning. But those answers won't uh, satisfy you. You want to know the truth for what it is, rather than what you think truth is. So, in that process, what happens is, when this existential inquiry comes into picture in your life, you seek somebody who, who can give you clarity about the human existence 
about the human being and it hello am i audible okay yeah yeah so the sex is very existential uh, uh, when existential crisis comes into your life whatever you believe up to now is completely shattered nothing you answering any question in your life and if you look at my dp there is a, there is a kind of uh, this uh, you look at that uh, what is the rubik square rubik cube huh? rubik cube you can look at uh, look at the person who is uh, climbing up there why he is climbing la climbing because he didn't got the answers he want the answers not made out of mind but by 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 direct experience so that uh, when that kind of seeking comes there comes the time where one who is already fulfilled one who know who he who, who really he really is the entire existence and became one with it such a person comes into our life because if you are seeking is very genuine and really direct you towards you rather than towards world or towards something out there towards you he starts is uh, is starts uh, making your inquiry more intense he stops you from moving here and there and makes you sit where you are and look into you such a person is called guru so he is not an individual because it, from the moment we are born there is a tendency to expand the tendency to grow to exist to experience in every human being that culmination of that tendency the culmination of human being is when he goes when he meets his guru and that guru takes you takes you or directs you towards your own fulfillment so this is what the seeking is for so why do you think these things when do you think these things happen within us like let's say if a uh, uh, if i am completely if my tummy is full then the questions would come or if my tummy is not full the questions would come what, what, when do you think this all start the the process uh, the urge to seek when does when does this actually start according, according to you even that uh, feeling of tummy is also an urge right it's also a seeking there is a there is a uh, hunger in you <laughs> for your there is a hunger for your body so you to fulfill that hunger you go and eat something you you seek food for your body because it is hungry in the same way there is a hunger for uh, hunger in soul or hunger in our uh, in life itself there is hung our individual existence is hungry for something some wholeness to become one with something it's always all desires it is said in Upan- upanishads actually everything uh, every desire is desire for self desire for self knowledge you are for example it's it, it is said that you seek uh, yes means every desire is to fulfill yourself but whatever that you are desiring and fulfilling in the world is not satisfying you it's it's not filling you to the brim there is a kind of 
dissatisfaction as there is a hunger for body the you eat food but how to really feel our means the how to really satisfy this thirst this thirst and this hunger of the soul hunger of uh, uh, our existence it's like you go here and there all 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 your life to achieve this and that and ultimately realize that a person wants to go to the top in his field and go, he struggles a lot and go and stand on the peak of his success then he realizes that it is just momentary he is just running around the ideas in his head and when he achieves whatever he wants he has everything around him but there is that emptiness in the heart that is the hunger that is a hunger which is in every human heart but to recognize that hunger then there is a kind of when you are not satisfying it with uh, uh, let like snacks means when you are hungry you eat snacks uh, hunger will subside for a time and again you go to your work you be in the rat race you do this and that and keep on not looking into the real hunger that you have so when guru is for that hunger the hunger of our entire being and that hunger that the self that uh, upanishads call as ravana maharshi also says that self is guru there is a inward seek inward pull within you what guru does is he just pushes you from inside and there is a pull from inside so that you merge with existence so it's a kind of combined force that acts in your life so that you become complete you realize yourself so people think uh, my stomach is full and i am satisfied that is only up to some extent but there are many man always try to seek desire something keep on trying to fulfill it and he wastes his energy his own time everything and at the end he realizes and dies with no satisfaction because he really didn't know himself and he really didn't know what existence is so such a that hunger can only fulfilled by those who know how to cook self knowledge in them and who really cooked the dish and enjoyed the delicious uh, taste of that uh, self self knowledge so as you as you just said a guru is someone who pushes you deep down within you and you pull, pull up yourself to then you realize you are one with the existence or uh, the one with the truth that makes sense but so so what is exactly happening here is it the guru who is uh, push uh, who is showing you the way or is it you who is realizing the way which is there within you already so guru is the one who who kind of uh, dust dust it off dust it off and uh, show that show the mirror back to you and say okay dude here here's what it is the reality all about is that what you are suggesting our guru is the one who actually lays down the path and asks you to go through this way and then you'll achieve it so the what exactly is or is it dependent on the the kind of seeking i'm doing so i'm i'm kind of confused your uh, stance on this uh, 
The thing yeah. is, it's not easy. Means it's not easy, but at the same time, easy because as I am experiencing my own uh, stay with my guru right now in my life. It's like he shows, he's a kind of mirror who shows your own self. This mirror shows two things. One is your own personality and its own uh, different kind of inbuilt structures, attitudes, which are uh, really stopping you from uh, I um, mean, stopping you from knowing yourself. Or on the other side, he also shows you what you are really, means your own true self. So it's it's like you, he, if you stay with Guru, it's like fire. You're always near the fire. And every moment he, you are pointed out, you're pointed out at one or the other point about your own shortcomings. This, this personality called Shiva with his own ego and identifications is, uh, is, is living with his own conditioning, whether it is biological, psychological, emotional. At all levels, there is a lot of conditioning. And there is a lot of complication. Oh, because of my uh, conditioning, uh, I am making things more complicated. But it's like until you are in a situation where you are constantly pointed out, where your ego or where your sense of uh, personality is constantly at uh, threat, not in a in real threat. Because there is something, there is a lot of, you know, means when you start looking at, when you start being at Guru or when you start really looking at yourself, there is a lot of bad in you, so-called bad, we call. There is ugliness in you. There is many things uh, that as a personality, I am good, bad, uh, neutral, everything. But that personality only changes when it is questioned, when it is pointed out why you are doing like this. When you psychologically understand the entire structure of your personality and at the same time, you are aware of it as a witness. So this pain, this pain, the Guru is like burning fire and you are near it and all the uh, unnecessary burden or trash that I carry he slowly burns away because constantly I am pointed out. This is this and I am looking into it. The moment I look into it, it no longer uh, has power so that I can act out of that uh, tendency. Tendencies are nothing but sanskaras. And one more important thing is to if you stay with Stay with Guru, it's like uh, you cannot escape. There is a strange feeling that you want to run away from him, but there is something in you which wants to stay with him. I am I'm talking about uh, means a personality or a, a person, a Guru, Tattva individualized in a person who really uh, in enlightened and experienced what he is and directing those who are in their path genuinely like because the tradition of Guru and Shisha is not just limited to India, it's everywhere on the planet even a thief has a Guru even a, uh, everybody has one or the other Guru but the real Sadhguru is one who is always one with the truth and who directs the people towards the truth.
So it's a kind of from him, but at the same time there is a full, there is a love, a unconditional love that you are receiving from somebody. Uh, and you cannot give anything to him. He is giving everything and you, you cannot give anything to him. That humbles you. If you, you see a person before you who is Guru, and he is perfect in everything. You, I, I don't know why, how he can do everything so spot on, and how he is always spontaneously uh, doing the uh, things which are appropriate to the situation. And it cannot be understood by mind. So until, until we see a person who is much more uh, efficient, much more conscious, much more um, powerful, powerful not in the sense of money and all, Powerful by his just presence. He has become a kind of uh, your own. Uh, you want to be like him. All these uh, uh, role models of uh, actors, actresses, celebrities, this and that, all these worldly role models uh, just disappear from your life. You want to be like your Guru. Beautiful. So take us through your journey of, um, uh, you know, uh, your, like, I know I'm, I'm part of it because you, you started, uh, you were an engineer who wanted to, to but ended up uh, taking up the psychology class. So before you, before you uh, went to the university, uh, have you met your guru? Like, just uh, take us through your personal journey there. How did you meet him? Uh, because I um, and uh, what what is so much unique about that gentleman whom you have met, and then um, uh, and then we I have more questions. Yeah, please take us. Uh, I was actually it's it's a kind of during actually I did my B Tech, and then for I worked for a year and started uh, for my preparation for UPSC because. Somewhere I felt that I need to do something. I need to serve the country. There is a kind of love for country. I wanted to do that. But in the process of preparation for of UPSC, there is many existential questions happened in my life. And there are situations where my family went through a few things. Where, where I was... Uh, it's a kind of existential crisis that happened that pulled me to uh, into questioning everything, questioning my own ideas about the reality, about myself, uh, about everyone around me. Then I started questioning what is the nature of reality, what is me, how mind works, how why people are suffering. Is there any way out? All this kind of, so many questions which are unanswered is constantly happening in me and I am started reading a lot of books, reading Swami Vivekananda, reading uh, many books of many other teachers. They answered my questions intellectually, but somewhere I am not Oh, full. Right now also I am not completely into that uh, fulfillment. Means it's kind of, how can I say, when I am in that position where I am full of my intellect, I read a lot. If you talk, ask me to talk about anything, I'll talk. But there is no direction in my life. And there is a deep I don't know, there was, there might have been a deep urge in me so that I need somebody to guide me. 
a real person so that uh, I, I i don't know what that's uh, that urge to find somebody or to uh, that desire for a person who really guide me in the direction of uh, uh, my own self really it's like i found that desire moved me into another direction i want to be a psychologist because i saw a lot of mental psychological illnesses in the society everywhere you see there is nothing but psychology happening out there psychology of illness psychology of war psychology of entire society directing directed into unconscious everywhere i i see only mind working a mind which is not conscious people who are not conscious but how can i come out of this web of ideas and get back to truth then i started searching for a place where i can learn or about both eastern and western psychology i entered into a university in india and there uh, i met a person who belongs to same my own native place my state and uh, i sp- first spoke with him in the phone then i when i met him there is a kind of recognition but still i, I have many doubts in my head <laughs> so uh, as i started living with him uh, we both decided that we we should stay together he was just acting like a normal guy uh, no which... no no hang on hang on for the, for the first timers uh, from the western side of the world the moment you say we both decided to stay could stay together they will take the other way so you have to you have to clarify it it's it's, like, it's for the western audience <laughs> <laughs> yeah you understand what i mean right yeah go ahead it's like uh, i am with him as a disciple initially it started as friendship uh, i thought him as he is a good friend but slowly i realized that he has a lot there is something mysterious in him which is not negative it is full of positive it's full of light but as i started interacting with him, with him when i started when i realized that he only said to me that we didn't met hmm, just for my meeting here there is there is a reason for our we both coming together and meaning we started... there is a reason there is a reason why you have chosen to be i mean this this sounds very mystic but uh, as um, I, i would love to go that way but i'll put it in logical essence so basically when you have decided to pick up this course in a distant uh, university from your house you had to stay in a, in a hostel which is given by the university and in the hostel yeah. uh, you met this gentleman and uh, you know not in hostel actually he uh-huh. used to Where stay outside of he used to oh, stay okay. outside of outside only independently uh-huh. he was he used to uh, be alone with his own okay. he used to teach, actually uh, he used to teach he is he is a yoga so he is he is already into the path of the yoga and spirituality yeah. right like yeah he has been okay. into spirituality for for the last 15 years oh okay right. that like makes sense he went okay. into uh, he went to himalayas he was Um, it's like my his journey is very unique it's like uh, he lived t- 10 20 lives in one life he wow. went through many so, means just for the sake that of intensity. shiva uh, uh. shiva so just for the sake of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, revising until um, like uh, just wanted to bring bring up the room to the uh, uh, kind of reset let's assume so basically uh, we are discussing with shiva about his experiences of uh, the, about the concept of guru 
uh, the Guru Tattva as such uh, according to him and he's sharing currently he's sharing his experience with the current Guru whom he is uh, uh, sharing uh, uh, his space with his mental space and his physical space as well um, he is doing the Shushruta uh, and basically that means um, uh, if you find a your Guru you are supposed to uh, uh, you know, just for sake of seeking, you are supposed to be with him or her and try to understand the logic, the way the guru's mind actually works. You try to imbibe that thought process into you, so you have to stay along with your guru and um, and travel with him or her. Shiva is sharing his experience um, about his guru, whom uh, he coincidentally met uh, uh, as part of his education process. So, yeah. That's the reset for people. And uh, please do share the room. Karen, Arav, Rajinderji, Alice, welcome. Please do share the room. We need uh, more folks to listen to this wonderful story of Shiva. Shiva, please continue. Uh, take us to how you met your guru and why do you why so did you like, why did you think he is a guru? I <laughs> the thing is it it's not me who chose us ultimately. It happened when it's like uh, entire existence or nature is directing you in a direction which where you only know only one step ahead. You can only see, uh, for example, you have a lantern of your own intellect or uh, your own uh, previous knowledge or that you read about something, but that is not enough. It only shows you little ahead of it but um, there is a plan that unfolds which we don't know in a, each each one's life and the, that is what happens guru happens in your life when you are really truthful to yourself and truthful when you're seeking is truthful you're not satisfied with just reading uh, about the things, uh, about Advaita, Dvaita, this and that. When you're intellectual satis intellectually sad not satisfied and you're not even, it's like, uh, it's like, you, you, it's like you give up everything. Whatever you learned up to now, they, it's just an intellectual answer. There is no real answer that you get from the, reading that you done it help you to direct yourself in a direction but the thing is when i met him it it's not my making it just happened now thing is happening entire existence or nature is putting me and him together now i need to be there are many shortcomings in me, which I am constantly pointed out and I am working on them. And re it's like, uh, slowly I, I am recognizing how much rubbish I carry <laughs> in me. <laughs> it's not just uh, what I read, uh, I might read all kind of uh, books on spirituality, but still there is a lot of rubbish, lot of instincts, animal instincts, drives, uh, ego, anger. It is called uh, the six enemies that usually uh, our yoga says there are Sarishad Vargas. Means anger, lust, uh, greed, everything. It's like you are before a light up to now you didn't saw. Uh, for example, you there is a room and there are a lot of things in that room. If you just burn a light, uh, I mean matchstick, the light is enough for you to see some something. But it's not completely uh, uh, bright enough, illuminated enough, so that you can see entire room. 
the disciple is like that there is light in him but that light is not enough for him to come uh, see himself completely but when he you comes in the presence of guru it's like you are before a uh, what we call uh, there are uh, that lights in the stadium that flood light <laughs> you are flooded with a light the so and all the rubbish that you carry in you will just constantly appear before you can can you can you take us through one example so which you have personally been through conscious act if i yeah. step shiva huh? shiva shiva i know huh. you are getting into trance i that's beautiful but the way you are the way you are trying to relieve those moments and the way you're trying to express out this poetic way it's amazing so i we i wanted to know like um i guess i'm um, same is case with the others who are listening to us uh, so uh, take us through one small experience where you where you uh, uh, where you have uh, you know made that this is this gentleman is who i've been looking for this gentleman is the one i can call him guru now so take us to take us to one small and simple Where, where this actually started with if you can remember it or one situation practical situation so, so that we can relate uh, and uh, seek for the same guru in our real lives shiva it's like you cannot say that this is this is this and uh, because of this reason i feel, i just uh, i believe that this is his guru it's not like that when you when he comes into your life it's you know you know it your logic doesn't doesn't need to be knowing it means you know it he, there is a presence here which is not an ordinary presence he by just staying beside him you know that he is it's not like it's not an intellectual knowing or a logical knowing where uh, you can uh, linearly but what if that uh, what somebody. if that happens to me let's say let's say whenever i talk to you i feel like you are my guru whenever i talk to karen i feel like uh, she is my guru what if that happens to me whenever i see a tree whenever i see a hum, hummingbird or a fly if this is happening to me then like how do i know like that's a question see that that's the the thing is the your definition of, of guru your definition uh-huh. of guru is out of your own learning or conditioning right it's an idea ha uh-huh. my definition no, of guru but, but, is just an idea in my head but how would i know that one person can answer all my questions this is the this is whom i need to see this is whom i need to be with so that all my questions get answered how do i know that because if you for example if you start asking everything there is answer again it's like what happens is uh, i learn many things and i just try to ask and show my uh, intellectual knowledge before the person before me i just uh, let me test him does he know this and know that that happens uh, i can show all my intellectual knowledge to him or uh, test him that he is a really guru but he will direct you he will make you know that you don't know anything <laughs> okay well, okay if, if somebody if I... makes you if somebody just silence you mm. by making you recognize that you don't know anything that is not out mm. of ego your ego is not hurt there oh but at okay. the same time okay. there is a recognition mm. that i am not no matter how much ever i am speaking there is he has answer for everything at one level at another level he is he is just silencing me there is a he is he is just making me know that all this is just in my own mind playing games 
so basically when you ask a question answer is coming from within you you think the guru is actually answering but you but the answer is happening within you right because this takes me back to my favorite shloka of dakshina murti where in say, where it says maunam vyakhyanam prakatita para brahma tatvam yuvanam where in which dakshina murti the one form of knowledgeable form of lord shiva is sitting under the tree and seven rishis who are who are believed to be the most uh, talented in hum- humanity has ever seen those seven people are sitting in front of him and all those questions were just answered by uh, the questions were actually being asked by seven rishis and by just mere uh no 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 the questions were asked no, no. by rishis inside inside right they are asking questions inside and the answers are also coming from just by looking at the rakshana murti's form by his movement of eyeballs because, because so the answer is coming vyakya. from within you right maun of vyakya it is called the maun of vyakya means yeah it's... we think uh, we learn many things from the books learn many from the things from the education in the world everything is nothing but just a thought a thought is nothing but a image in your head and that image you want your image as knowledge you think your image about things as knowledge and and when it comes to you being in the presence of guru it's like you are constantly put to question and you might ask many questions hundreds of questions he makes all questions irrelevant without answering them and answering answering them with just few i mean questions means he'll make you question your own ideas your own beliefs by making into by bringing a kind of sensibility uh, it's a kind it's like you are made you you are made to realize that whatever you know is just an idea and truth and just that's it. that gives when you realize that whatever you know it is everything came out came from the world and there is nothing called your knowledge here you learned it from outside and uh, and when you show that before a guru he knows he knows the truth he know what real knowledge is knowledge of not knowledge of mind but knowledge of being even i am talking about all these terms uh, I, i don't have experience of all that i might have little here and there spiritual experience but uh, that ultimate ex- one is with that ultimate state where you are just silent and all your questions are answered and you are nowadays it's like uh, uh, you are you are made to do everything in your home you are made to wash utensils you are made to do you might get many questions you might think that uh, my questions are not answered why i am doing all this stuff i'm washing this i'm cleaning the room i'm doing all this thing i'm 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 working like uh, labor here all this kind of thought thoughts comes in your head is it really for worth worth doing all this is uh, is really a guru these all these are also uh, comes into play but the real battle is not with you and uh, guru but it is between guru is constantly fighting with our mind so that it loses its grip over us and we realize our own self and that can only happen when you are living a real life not living in your intellect when you are cleaning how much conscious are you do you th- are you thinking that you are doing labor for somebody if you are thinking you are a labor here 
that is the ego acting out there because you think you are something more than uh, this all people you think you are great you don't need to do all this puny little things so because we have a self image of we becoming we are great we know this we know that <laughs> but when you do work in your home how many mistakes that i commit humbles me <laughs> that i cannot even do these little little things really consciously it's like military training it's uh, you are put to test every moment you are always on on your feet <laughs> mm. amazing you walk, amazing because you are you are walking for example you walk i walk everybody walks differently every person's walking is different because of many things psychology his emotions his own past his own genetics everything plays in that walking itself by just looking at your walk he can say that you, you are really conscious or not conscious by the way you see you cannot escape from him if you are dual in your mind you will get caught you cannot it's like everywhere there is light and you want to find a place of a shadow to hide <laughs> what you cannot hide you cannot hide from the light which which is everywhere we, you cannot escape from the all seeing eye there is a, in ancient times there is something called all seeing eye the eternal witness that vedanta calls omniscience so you cannot escape from it that helplessness there is a kind of helplessness where you cannot escape and everything that you think you are how ugly you are how much rubbish you carry every your weakness comes forefront and you are you are uh, like you fell into a pan a pan which is on the stove which is always burning so <laughs> that's the thing that's it's very interesting and when i start uh, when i when i'm uh, being with my guru and i also started reading about gurus how they test uh, uh, their disciples now i am realizing that i i am going through the same tests i uh, whether i am successful or not is not in my hand it's his grace or the grace of god but i am it's like for example two important things in my home i am cleaning every day he ask me to clean uh, keep everything in the home clean most important things to be cleaned is one is kitchen and the other is bathroom he says that if <laughs> we think uh, we think we, we there comes a pride right why should i clean bath bathroom or a pot that every day i am using or kitchen because these two are me one is the place where you eat and the other is a place where you shit and a person's personality comes out how how means how consciously he keep both kitchen and bathroom 
how uh, neatly he keep uh, both of this entire house is important but both this these things are are very important so it, it's like your personality is seen by how you keep your bathroom it's not just about sitting there <laughs> and coming out you need to clean there your shit when you are sitting you are also uh, kind of removing many things. when you are cleaning your home it's not just cleaning your home it's just cleaning your mind also how many things makes, around you are that, in order that, that makes amazing sense that makes amazing sense i wow so it's like whatever <laughs> that you. is around you Thank how you organized it is i want mm. to be a yogi but i nothing in my life is organized i am a bogi not a yogi <laughs> means i just enjoy <laughs> I, I am not even conscious about my own body, my own things around me. I am not even consciously mm. living every day of my life. And I call, uh, I want to become yogi. I want to become this and that. Mm. So it's like everything in your life, you need to become conscious. i'm still working on it and long way to go <laughs> but i'm learning so because when you are conscious in this daily life then you can be conscious of what is really happening within you the real motives be, be, beyond your behind your actions are you motivated mm. out of your own selfishness are you doing things out of love makes sense amazing so when you are conscious in the daily life you then you can you can grasp that subtlety mm. which happens within our mind yeah beautiful beautiful shiva thank you ah oh. i do you want to reveal the name of your guru or uh, do you want to keep it I secret think it's better to be unknown mm. okay amazing amazing yeah i hope i i'll get a chance to speak with him and uh, learn a lot from him i hope uh, we can uh, talk and let others speak to him as well so that we can learn from his experiences all right i i i really thankful for your time shiva and uh, today we had a wonderful uh, discourse from you <laughs> i'm glad it's not discourse it's just uh, i am because we uh, just uh, means telling about my struggles <laughs> <laughs> no no that struggle that, and said, that my personality is struggling and my real self is happy to be happily born means i i wrote a poem actually yeah so let's conclude the room with that poem yeah please yeah. let's conclude the room with that beautiful poem go ahead okay just one second time. let me turn on let me also turn on some nice music in the back so it's it's like uh, um you have to be a little louder please be a little louder go ahead hello am i audible <coughs> yes shiva yeah just be a little louder so that the, the the music this doesn't actually, uh, overtake your voice this is actually the first poem i wrote on the guru purnima uh it goes like this hari om tat sat sai and now 
Uh, I'm reading it. Uh, here in this poem, I means just uh, me, that sense of uh, um, I-ness within me or my, my own personality as a Shiva living in this world. So here, now I am starting. May I burn away willingly in your fiery presence. May I, full of darkness, turn into your light. May I, non-existent, realize your eternal existence. May I, the noise, shall disappear in your eloquent silence. May I become nothing and you become everything. In your love, may my heart open fully to all that is. On this Guru Paurima, I cannot do anything except to be eternally grateful for your presence in my life and may I always feel it no matter where I am. Thank you. Wow. So it's like so, I personality so much, uh... asking for the presence that Guru Tattva to come into me so that I yeah Wonderful, so, Shiva. It's all Wonderful. about ultimately. It's all about. Lastly, one thing I, uh, I want to say: it's all about love. How fully and fully you can love everything. My uh, master says the same thing. It's all about love. Is your heart open to everything without any uh, judgment? Can you love everything in your in your life, everything in the existence? Or can you realize that you are just made out of love? And be the presence of that love. But we think we just lose ourselves in the jungle of intellect, intellectual knowledge and st starts neglecting our own heart our own start neglecting the the real secret is in the love bhakti bhakti is nothing but love the secret key for all doors to open is love i'm i think i i must learn to love more <laughs> so do i Thank you so much, Shiva, for your wonderful time today. And uh, I'm lucky that uh, uh, you uh, you were available for a quick room. I appreciate your uh, presence and uh, pranam to the lotus feet of uh, your guru. Uh, I hope I'll be blessed with his uh, with his presence sometime in one of our rooms. Let's uh, call it a day and uh, let's um, uh, Karen, Arav, Elise and uh, Ivy, thanks a lot for listening and others who have joined earlier, others who's go who are going to listen to this podcast in the future. Thanks to you as well. Thank you so much again, Shiva, for your wonderful presence. Thank you and speak for making me speak about him. <laughs> thanks to him, thanks to you, through you to him. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful day, wherever you are. Namaskar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take care. Bye. Thank you.